I'm gonna jump straight into these four very simple money saving tips. And if you pay very close attention throughout this video, you're gonna walk away with actionable steps to save more money than you ever have before in your entire life so that you and your family can live the life that you've always wanted to live. If this is your first time checking out this channel, hey, what's up? My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can better yourself every single day and live life on your own terms. On this channel, I talk about saving money, making more money, and getting out of debt. Let's get into this. Tip number one is stop waiting. My biggest issue with saving money is the fact that it feels like a big waiting game that never ends. When I first got started, I found myself in a seemingly endless loop of waiting for my next paycheck to come along just so I could save a few hundred dollars every month. And of course, majority of one of my two paychecks went straight towards bills, so I always felt like I was in an endless race against time. So I waited on opportunities like overtime, getting a raise at work, or getting a promotion at work so I could make more money in order to save more money in the long run. And with that, I set goals for myself, which ironically led to more waiting. There's one problem with that. In the real world, overtime gets cut and raises can take years to get, and they don't give you that much of a boost. So I guess technically three problems. So there I was setting goals for myself that would take years, hoping that I could get a three to 5% raise every single year. And that was a waiting game that never ended. You see how that endless loop starts? See, here's a fun fact about me. I don't like waiting on anything. I can't stand it. To me, time is extremely valuable and I especially don't like to wait on other people. Like if we're supposed to meet somewhere at eight o'clock and you don't get there till 8.15, oh, I'm not gonna be happy about my 15 minutes, man. And that's why I prefer to do things by myself anyways, but that's, that's besides the point. Look, over the course of the past few years, I became a guy who takes matters into my own hands and that's exactly what I did. Prime example, two years went by and I didn't get a merit increase, no raise, no nothing, despite getting very high performance reviews. So you know what I did? I said, screw it, I'm gonna give myself a raise. I set up the small business which cost me nothing to start and it generated me hundreds of dollars a month and that was straight profit. I didn't have to pay for anything, right? And it was doing something that I loved doing ever since I was a kid and that was drumming. And that led to uh, several other ventures and that ended up leading to this YouTube channel right here which has already generated over a thousand dollars within just a couple of months of being monetized. And what I learned from all that is, if you want to raise at work, you either have to wait or ask. And neither one of those guarantees a yes. I'm not the type of person to just leave my fate into the hands of another human being. And I'm definitely not the type of person to just wait indefinitely when I can go get what I want somewhere else. So what that made me realize is, I don't need anyone's permission to go out and get it myself. And the one thing that supercharged my savings was going out there and getting a side hustle to bring in more money every single month. And it took a little work, you know, I had to put in some work up front, but it gave me long-term results. Now there's no need to go out there and start a business or even a YouTube channel if that's not what you wanna do. The idea is to simply find something that brings more income in for you and it's not as difficult as you think. After this video, you can go check out my side hustle videos and see just how easy it can be to set them up. But in the meantime, I really want you to pay attention to this very important detail. Really think about and understand the amount of money that you need to save to reach your goals and also how much extra money you need to make in order to fast track your savings goals because that's how you win. That's how you can get the house you've been saving for years faster. That's how you can become financially secure significantly faster. And while we're at it, go ahead and comment down below what you're going to do once you hit your savings goals. And don't be afraid to get specific. I want to know what trips you want to take. I want you to paint a picture of what your life would look like in an ideal world where you reach your savings goals. Once you have a plan for what you want and how to get there, that's when you start to see it. That's when you start to feel it. And that's the number one secret behind saving money. Now another is discipline. But I'll tell you this, human nature gets in the way of discipline. And whenever you put money up against human nature, money wins every time. Our desires, our dreams, our emotions take over in such a way that we forget about the bigger picture that we were just talking about. Think about why people get scammed. Think about why people spend thousands of dollars on something they know sounds too good to be true. Even think about why people get played in relationships. You get what I'm saying? It's because our emotions are so powerful. I've been there and I'm sure you've been there too. So I'm definitely not criticizing here. My point is if we can't control our emotions, 
they're going to control us and eventually they'll control our spending habits too. So the one thing that can top discipline, in my opinion, is a built-in system that sends over a certain amount of your money into a savings account automatically without you lifting a finger. Another part of human nature is memory. Sometimes we forget things like I can't tell you how many times I forgot to transfer money from my paycheck into my savings account. And part of that comes from me just being forgetful, <laughs> but there's also a deeper side to that. And I'm sure this will ring true for you as well. Sometimes I would just get too comfortable. You see, when we're happy with the amount of money that's in our bank accounts, the drive and desire to keep adding on to those numbers goes down. And this happens on a very subconscious level. I didn't realize I was doing it, but I was telling myself things like, oh, I'll just transfer the money later. It's no big deal. And I had to realize that when I'm telling myself those things, it's a sign that I'm getting too comfortable. Have you ever had a friend or a family member who will just keep driving the car? Y'all done been on the road for hours, but they just keep driving, avoiding each and every gas station until the gas light comes on? Right, you see exactly where I'm going with this. Getting too comfortable can stop you dead in your tracks if you're not careful. And when you're saving money, you do not, I promise you, you do not want to stop your momentum or slow it down or anything. And that's why it's so important to automate. Depending on who you bank with, you should have the option of sending over a certain percentage of your checking account into your savings account every month. But of course, you'll have to look into that yourself. But if you don't want to go that route and you're not feeling like doing all of that, there is an easier option. And it's actually one of my favorite ways to save money. And that's with the capital app, spelled with the Q. And the reason that I like this app so much is because it allows you to set up savings goals, set up rules for yourself, and it's all completely automated. But my favorite thing about this app is the fact that you can set up your own individual savings categories for yourself. Let's say you wanna save up for an emergency fund or a TV. You might even wanna save up for a boat, or you might wanna do all three of them at the same time. You can do that with this app and you can look at them and categorize them and look at how much you're able to save in each one. I've personally been using this app for years and it's helped me save tens of thousands of dollars on multiple occasions just by simply using the app. Like, had I not been using this app, I probably would have saved half as much as I did. But anyways, that's just been my experience. If you wanna really check it out, it's linked in the description and I think it'll help you out a lot. Now here's where the game starts to change a little bit. Outside of saving money inside hustling, I wanna quickly teach you an extremely valuable skill that'll save you a lot of money without you missing out on enjoying life. And if you didn't know it could be done, check this out. The skill is avoiding paying out of pocket as much as possible. So income you make from work or extra money that you come across like stimulus checks or even your side hustle income, try to avoid spending that money as much as possible when it comes to paying for things like clothes, shoes, eating out, flights, or other luxury items. Instead, let something else pay for them. I have two examples. The first one is credit cards. Now this is a little advanced, but it's super easy to do. And I know that some people think of credit cards as taboo, and I'll be the first to tell you that I used to think of credit cards in the same way. Like I used to despise them, and I used to just avoid them at all costs. But then one day I saw the light, you know what I'm saying? And that light is credit card points, which have value just like money does. So I have a Chase Sapphire preferred credit card, right? This bad boy right here, this fancy metal card, right? So that card has rewards points, right? And so with that in mind, I thought about things that I'm already spending my money on anyways. Gas, rent, groceries, utilities, you know, money that I know without a doubt that I will absolutely be spending every month anyway. This is not advice, this is just what I do and it works and this is exactly why you should never sleep on credit cards. I use my credit card for rent and utilities, for example, and those happen to be two bills that I can set up to automatically charge my credit card every month, which automatically builds up the rewards points. Then what I do is I'll pay it off completely way before the end of the month because credit card interest rates are ridiculously high. And that's exactly why I said up front that this is an advanced technique because of the simple fact that you actually have to be disciplined enough to pay off these credit cards on time. Again, this is not advice, this is just something that I do. Now here's the thing with credit cards. Obviously you're gonna have to spend a certain amount of money with your credit cards in order to get a certain amount of rewards points in order to get anything valuable out of them that's just how it works and that's exactly why i go for more expensive things like car insurance utilities and rent doing that consistently is exactly how people are able to fly and travel for free that's exactly how people are able to get free stuff like apple watches or even macbooks now I'll be completely honest, it does take a while to save up a certain amount of points in order to get anything good like flying or MacBooks or whatever the case is for free. But the beauty of it is you can use some of your points and some money out of pocket so that you can still pay for it at a very good discount. And either way you look at it, you'll still be spending way less money than you would have been if you just spent the whole thing out of pocket. 
The second way is even easier, but it's just not as available to as many people, but that's through a point system at work. And this point system is where you do something really good at work and you get recognized by say your boss or one of your peers. They give you points, the points accumulate, and once you get a certain amount of points, you can redeem those points for something cool like gift cards, TVs, or even something all the way up to laptops. I mean, you can really get crazy with the stuff. It's really cool. This is actually how I got my AirPods for free. I just kind of let my points sit and accumulate and I actually kind of forgot about them until I was able to redeem them for a few gift cards in order to get these for free. Not all jobs are gonna have this opportunity for their employees and not everyone is going to be in the place to have a rewards credit card and some people might not even be able to feel comfortable with using them responsibly. I totally understand that, it's very understandable. But the reason I bring up those two points is to show you the mindset behind what I do to avoid spending out of pocket as much as possible. Like, I really don't like spending money on myself, especially when it comes to luxury items or nice things because it doesn't bring extra money into my pocket or my family's pocket. So I just kind of see it as a waste. That's why I like free stuff so much. Y'all see these lights behind me? I have two sets of them. I got one set for free and I got one for like 75% off because of those rewards points that we were just talking about. Just to put it into perspective, depending on the amount of lights that you get, it'll run you at the minimum of like $200. So as you can see, I saved quite a bit just by avoiding spending out of pocket as much as possible. And this brings me to one of the biggest pieces of advice I can possibly give you when it comes to saving money or even just money advice, period. After you've saved your money, don't just let it sit idle. Let your money work for you. That's the number one thing I advocate for. If you're gonna take the time to save your money, I think it's a smart idea to make your money work for you once you have it by putting some of your money into a savings account and some of it into an account that actually makes money for you. I'm specifically talking about investing, and I know that investing makes some people feel uncomfortable, especially when the stock market got hit last year because of the world starting to end. I get it. Investing made me uncomfortable too for the longest time, but guess what? The same way I let getting too comfortable with the amount of money in my bank account get in the way of my financial goals was the exact same way I let getting too uncomfortable with investing slow me down. There's a delicate balance, and a lot of the time, the one thing that keeps us from investing is a lack of knowledge and understanding. When you hear about investing, most of us think about day trading, Wall Street, and individual stocks, which makes us default to the thought of, oh, that's risky. Now I don't give investment advice because legally I can't, but I'll tell you this, in my opinion, index funds are the way to go when it comes to investing. I'm not gonna bore you to death about it, but basically it's a way of investing that doesn't put all of your eggs in one basket because instead of just buying one stock, you actually own multiple shares of stocks, which means more long-term growth for you and your family, which also means a great future. Not just random stocks either, we're talking about some of the largest stocks on the market. There's a bunch of different indices that these index funds track, but again, I'm not about to put you to sleep with all of that. You've probably heard of the S&P 500 index. That's the index that a lot of popular index funds track, which means they tend to mimic the performance of the S&P 500. The S&P 500 follows the 500 largest company stocks in the market. So when you invest in an index fund that follows the S&P 500, you're going to one, get diversified investments which do well over time, and two, your index fund is gonna perform very similar to the actual S&P 500. Just for a reference, the S&P 500 has been known to stand the test of time. Through economic downturns, recessions, and depressions, it still historically gives returns. Like if you look at the entire history of the S&P 500, you'll see that the historical return has always been between 10 and 11% returns, which is why I advocate for it because I invest in index funds too. All right, so I just gave you some insight on investing, but keep in mind, I'm no expert. I'm definitely not a Warren Buffett. I don't have millions of dollars in my investing account, let alone billions, at least not yet. But I just wanted to share this with you. There are more secure ways of investing than you probably think. Just please make sure you do your own research before you decide to invest. Comment down below if you actually want me to make investment videos in the future because I'd be more than happy to do that. But anyways, that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Stay cold.